Hi, my name is Annette Settle, and I am from Dillsburg, Pennsylvania. Hello, my name is Adam Settle. I am from Pens from Dillsburg, Pennsylvania. I have Cobalamin C deficiency. So Adam was diagnosed with Cobalamin C deficiency. Um, he was a week old. He had um, something came up in the newborn screening, and so our pediatrician sent us to Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, where he um, was toxic and um, wasn't eating or anything. And anyway, he was there for 10 days, and we started the journey with um, medication, B12 shot every day, and. Um, he, um, I, I was thinking about how he wasn't eating, um, and we ended up putting a, um, he had a feeding tube, was formula, and then we put a G tube in when he was five months old. And so he had that for many years, actually up until last year, he had a feeding tube, um, but we were only using it, um, for just to keep hydrated over the last probably 10 years. Actually, um, since Adam was one of nine, um, I was taking care of him at home. He had um, like an IV hooked up to his G-tube, um, a formula, and it was just a constant drip because um, he couldn't get enough in. So anyway, I was up most nights um, with him. If the tube came out, formula was everywhere. And anyway, we had a nurse come in, and this one morning she came in and she looked at me and said, you can't endure this. You, you cannot maintain this. Um, and you have other children. And so I found out that I was eligible for a nurse. And so I had a nurse come in nine to five, five days a week. And, um, and that was up until he was three. And then um, we were back to, and of course we took care of him at night. And, and then we switched over to giving him his B12 shots, making sure when he was in school, we made sure the nurse gave him his medicine at lunchtime. And then um, as he's gotten older, I still will remind him to take his medicine. Occasionally. <laughs> My day today looks like getting up in the morning. Normally it takes me about 30, 40 minutes to at least to wake up and uh, then after that having my quiet time then I take my meds and on top of yeah take take my meds and uh, then start my day from there so I take my meds three times a day morning lunch dinner most recently it hasn't really been <laughs> at first I was doing three times a three times a day then I wasn't doing I only did it twice a day and doubled up then the doctor said she wants me to do it three times a day still a lot of the time I always end up getting it twice a day because it's just simpler I would say some of the some of the challenges I face is like in the middle of the day if I'm working on something and a lot of, a lot of the time I just totally forget to do forget to take it and uh, sometimes it's between if I do end up taking it in the afternoon sometimes it's mid afternoon to like four or five and then one maybe for bed or or I end up just taking it, doubling it up on in the evening right before I head to bed. 
So I'm trying to get it done earlier in the evening so I don't forget it. Yes, there are definitely some challenges that I face with the kind of work I do with my beds is because at first um, I used to have to pack so much so much meds and uh, now now that it seems to be getting easier and easier to pack lighter with my meds as I travel and so and then on, on top of that, with being partially blind, it, it's definitely a challenge. So, uh, most recently I found out there's an app through my glasses that, in my phone, that I can call for assistance and they can help me navigate certain airports. And so, they can just pull up a map of the airport and give me the, the simplest and fastest route to where I need to go. That's pretty, that's pretty neat. But one thing that I love is that the HCU network community. Just whenever I, whenever I'm traveling, I can, while I'm doing the work that I do, I can also meet all these different families that I've been able to meet. People to help me out whenever I needed help with giving me a B12 shot whenever I needed it. I would say the challenges um, Adam has had, he always wanted to do and be, um, do what everybody else is doing. Um, and he did not want to be different and he didn't want to be set apart. He wanted to be part of the crowd, you know, um, just like any kid. And so, um, but I don't believe that he totally, un he didn't understand that the importance of really being careful about um, hydration. When Adam gets dehydrated, we're in the hospital. And, um, you know, one time we were in there for 10 days just from dehydration. Um, and because he gets so, everything's out of whack and it takes so long to get things stabilized. So, so the importance of keeping him hydrated um, and um, without nagging, you know, drink, drink, drink. Um, you know, whenever Adam would get uh, blood work, blood work, which, you know, they do that a lot. And, um, one time he was extremely dehydrated and the memory of that experience, <laughs> um, stayed with him. And so even now when he goes to get blood work for two and a half hours, we sit in the car and he drinks water to make sure that it doesn't it's not painful like it was before it was. Um, and so, and I would say the challenges, you know, today he faces are, um, he's so active and I think he misses his lunchtime meds more because he's uh, meeting with people. He's out to lunch. He's, he's on the go. And, um, which is wonderful. One hand it's, it's, it's our dream come true. And then the other hand, um, you know, his levels are rising and so it would be beneficial for him to get it three times a day. But they're always, they're always rising, so, and they've never gone down. Except one time. Except one other time. <laughs> I'm gonna have Adam answer that first, and then I'm gonna have Annette. Oh, nutter butters. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even know how to answer that question. Really my biggest concern um, is that I don't think about it that much. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. I really don't. Yeah, me, 
<laughs> that's my that's my answer. Because <laughs> there's nothing I could do about it. My hope for Adam is that he continues to be who he is. He loves people. He loves helping people. He loves being in community. Um, my prayer um, and hope for him is that he be healthy, that he stay healthy so he can go all the places he wants to go and meet all the people that he wants to meet. I would say my greatest hope for, first of all, myself, is uh, for perfect health, but also uh, as I am preparing to move to overseas, that everything that needs to get done with medical insurance is, as we all know, that's it's terrible. So, um, my biggest hope for this community is that they continue to encourage one another, build each other up. Um, I was thinking about the first and only conference that I attended. Um, the difference between then and now is amazing. Um, so many more um, people children with Kabbalah Mitzi deficiency that um, don't have um, challenges that Adam has, that um, they, you know, different doctors, different different medications, different, um, you know, different ways of, of uh, handling their condition. And um, I'm, it makes my heart happy that um, they're thriving and um, the parents are so involved and even the grandparents I have no I, all the grandparents I've met is wow you know um, and um, because you cannot do it alone If I had one message to communicate is to not waste a day because we all have different gifts that we're supposed to use. So, mm. something I like to share. If I had one message to communicate, I would say, please be mindful of your whole family. Don't elevate the sick child. Include all your children. And if you can, if you have the opportunity, set each one aside at some time so they know that they are just as loved and just as valued as their sick sibling. There we go.